Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be using the Lawn Fawn Sets Forest Feast and Cheery Christmas to create a gift box instead of a card. So I stamped out all the images that I'll be using with some Memento Tuxedo Black ink on some white cardstock and I'm going to be coloring these in with Copic markers. So for the little raccoon, I originally started with W00, W1, and W3. Um, he ended up being a little bit too light for me and I realized that pretty quickly. I'm coloring with the W3 here and I realized there's not quite enough shadow. So I am going to um, eliminate the W00 and add in the W5. And that was much more what I was going for. So I'm just going to continue on with that W5 adding in all my shadows. I'm kind of shading as if the um, the light source was head on, as right on the front of his body. So I'm shading towards the outside edges, which is also gonna make him look a little bit more rounded and three-dimensional. And then I'm going to bring in that color with the W3 once again. Um, just also adding two of the stripes on his tail. And then I'll finish off with the W1. Just keeping the centers nice and bright as the highlight. Then I'm going to move on to his mask and the other two stripes on his tail. So I'm using W9 as my darkest shade. And that's a really dark, almost black color. So that's going to work really well, but still have a little bit more dimension than a solid black. Then I'm going to take the W7 to blend that towards the center. Um, just making sure to keep an area left over for the W5, which I'll just use to blend everything together nice and smoothly. And while I have that W9 out, I'm going to use it to color in the deer's hooves. Most of the raccoon's belly is going to end up covered in the final um, gift box, but I wanted to add just a little bit of shading um, right under his neck. His head would cast a shadow, so I just used W1 and W00 for that. I'm going to color the squirrel as if he were a red squirrel, which um, is my favorite animal in Germany. Um, I, for those of you who don't know, I was actually married in Germany and all of my children were born in Germany. My husband is from there, so um, the red squirrels were very common to see and always very entertaining to me. I just love them. So I'm using E15, E17, and E19 for him. I used the E19 as my shadow and then just brought that color out with the E17 and then I'm going to fill in the majority of his body with the E15. I did leave a little bit of area on his belly and I'm going to grab an E93 for that just to give it a little bit of a pinkish tint um, just so it has like that kind of flesh tone there and that's going to blend right into the E15. I also decided to add just a touch of it to the raccoon. I thought maybe it would work, um, but I didn't really care for it. So I just went back and grabbed my W00 and blended that back out almost till it disappeared. For the deer's body, I'm using E31, E33, E35, and E37. Again, just adding my darkest shades first since there's not a lot of area, it's easy to do. Um, then blending out with the E35, mostly around his belly between his legs. There would be a, a, a dark shadow cast there and then down from the top of his forehead, filling in his little ears. Then I'll take the E33 and I'm going to almost finish with that. Just leave a little bit of space to fade off into the E31. I'm also going to use those lighter three shades for my loaves of bread. So I'm starting out with the E31 because I don't want to get too carried away with the dark. I don't want my bread to look burnt. And I'm actually going to build up in color to the E33 and the E35. And then I'll just blend back down again and finish with that E31, just coloring everything in. Um, and that will also dry back a bit, you know, as the color fades. And I will also use those three shades for the pie crust since they're a nice toasty brown color. So I'm just filling in, um, putting the darkest part on the top edge of the crust there and then down in the corner um, because the top crust is where it would get the most heat in the oven. 
and then just blending back out with the E31. For the rest of the deer's face and his belly, I'm using E51, E53, and E55. So I just started again darkest to lightest, bringing the color down just to keep it consistent from how I did the rest of his body. And then fading off towards his nose. I did feel like the E51 was still a bit too dark, so I am going to pull in the E50 to finish things off. And I also did use the E53 and E51 to do his antlers. I'm going to continue using those four shades for my hedgehog. I'm going to add my darkest, the E55, right up close to where his spikes are going to start. And then um, add the E53 and then the E51, blending and keeping like the front of his face and his belly the lightest with the E50. And then I'll go back to that E93 to just color in everybody's ears. For the hedgehog's spikes, I'm going to use E44, E47, and E49. And I'm just doing a flicking motion, starting with that E44, adding tiny little spikes all over his little body. And then I'll go in with the E47 just to add some more depth and then finish off with the E49. I want my mashed potatoes to look nice and fluffy and buttery, so I'm using Y00 and Y11 to add just a hint of color and then blending out with the colorless blender. I'm adding just a touch of C1 and C0 to the whipped cream on my pumpkin pie. And then for the actual pumpkin part of the pie, I'm using YR14 and YR18. Just keeping my darkest towards the back and then blending out with the YR14. And then um, because I was just using two colors, I'm going to go back with that YR18 and just add a hint more of darkness and just blend that back out. For the two bowls, I'm going to use BG11, BG13, BG15, and BG18. And because they're exactly the same coloring combo, I'm just going to show the one. So I just started with the BG18 towards the very edges and then worked my way towards the center with the BG11. And then to finish off our coloring, I'm just going to use a little bit of C0 and C1 to add a hint of color to our little gravy boat. I still want it to look white, but I want it to have some dimension. And so I'll just blend that out with the colorless blender. To create our treat box, I have die cut two panels using some MFT snow cone cardstock. So you need two panels to create one box, and this is the Lawn Fawn Milk Carton die that I used. The die also scores all the lines that you need to create your box, and so I'm just going to reinforce those by going over them with my Teflon bone folder and just folding those over so that they will come together nice and easy once we start to assemble. And I'm just going to use my fingers to go ahead and bend in that pinch closure for the milk carton. Then I'm going to take some sticky adhesive, this is some score tape, and I'm going to line that up down the edge of each of the two panels. I don't want mine to close permanently. You can add some extra tape if you do, but I'm going to leave both ends open. So I'm just going to add the, the tape to those two little tabs, and then I'll line everything up and just put it together so that it becomes one panel. So right here is where I made a mistake. I went ahead and closed up the box and made it completely square. And that's how the bottom works. You have that little tab closure that's really cute. Um, but I wanted to add some grass and it probably would have been easier if I had left the box completely flat. Um, it's not that hard to add it after, but I did make a measuring mistake and that probably could have been avoided if I had left it straight um, and just done it as one panel. So I die cut my grass to eight inches long and um, cut that with the grass die by just moving that die across to create a seamless panel. Um, I thought that eight inches would be enough. I thought I measured correctly, but I think it just adds a little bit extra for the folds. So I ended up being just a tiny bit short, which you'll see. So I would recommend that you actually cut your grass to eight and a quarter. So right there, I ended up just a tiny bit short. 
I'm going to cover it up because I used that strong score tape and it would have been really hard to rip it off. So I'm just going to get creative and cover that up. So no worries, but um, yeah, you might want to just add your grass ahead of time while you, it's in one long flat panel instead of folding it up already like I did. I wanted to add some trees, so I die cut the Lawn Fawn Stitch Tree border out of some brown cardstock and then I cut the tops of the trees out of some orange cardstock and I'm just going to trim the trees right off that panel and start to add them to my box. I just adhered them down with a little liquid glue and then before I press them down into place I'm just going to slide in the tree tops and then just make sure that that's pressed down securely. I added one tree to each of the four sides of the box and I'm also going to add one critter to each side. So I'm going to use the raccoon to cover up that little goof with the grass because his tail is going to just kind of stick off the side and overlap. And I'm going to give him the little pumpkin pie to hold. And then I'll just fold that over to the next panel and add the little hedgehog and he's going to hold the gravy boat. The next panel is going to be the deer, so that will actually be the back of the box. And I'm going to add the little bowl of mashed potatoes right beside him. And then on the last panel we're going to add the little red squirrel and he's going to get the basket of bread. So everybody's bringing something to the feast and I think this would be super cute to use as like your Thanksgiving um, placeholders or favors at your table. You could personalize these with a little tag. I'm going to keep mine general, but um, this would be super cute to put each person's name on. So I die cut some brown cardstock using the tiny tags and then I've got a sentiment from the tiny tag sayings. I'm going to ink that up with some Versamark ink and just press that down. And then I'll add some white heat embossing powder to that and go ahead and melt that with my heat tool. Then you can fill your box with whatever you'd like. I'm using some treat size candy, but some candy corn would also be cute. And then I'll just punch two holes in the top with my crop dial. Then I'm going to grab some lawn trimmings. This is the Halloween lawn trimmings and I'm going to string that through the holes. I'll just tie that off in a knot and then add my tag right onto one of those strings and then I can finish off with a nice little bow or you could also just do another little knot and trim off the ends. And that is going to complete our project for today. There's a look at all four sides. I hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said, this would be a super cute idea for your Thanksgiving table or you could also do it in a Halloween theme and do it as your little treats for you know, the trick-or-treaters. So thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. That really helps me out and lets me know what kind of content you guys like to see. Here's an extra couple videos you may also enjoy. You can always click on my photos to subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell to make sure that my videos always end up in your feed. I hope you all have an amazing day. Bye bye.